Today, I'm gluing up a tabletop. So I'm gonna show you how to glue up a tabletop. Stay tuned. Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome back, Jason with Ben's Woodworking. Um, it's kind of a gloomy, miserable, rainy day outside, so it kind of changed my ideas on some of the things that I was gonna to do today. Uh, but it's okay, because I'm currently working on a baluster table that's gonna have a red oak top uh, for the table and the benches. So I figured today would be a great opportunity to show you the process that I go through uh, when I'm gluing up my tabletops. Now, I will be using a few tools that, that not everybody's gonna have, obviously, um, but it can be done with multiple different tools. I'm just gonna show you the process that I take and then you can apply uh, whatever tools you have to that process. For example, uh, for my alignment and for my glue up, I'm going to use uh, my Festival Domino. Uh, but you could use many things. You could use dowels and you could use a biscuit joiner for the alignment or you could use nothing at all and just simply glue it and clamp it together. Um, but I'm just going to show you the steps that I take. I've already cut down my lumber. It's already the same thickness. It's already to the desired length that I want. So basically from here, I'm just going to go through the process of steps that I take to ensure that the process goes smoothly. So the first thing that I do when I'm figuring out my tabletop is I'm always going to make it a little bit longer than what the actual finished length is gonna be. And I do that for one very specific reason. When it comes time to go ahead and glue up the tabletop, a lot of times, you know, you can try to get one end perfectly flush, um, but something happens in the clamp, uh, clamping process, as you start to tighten the clamps, maybe one of the board shifts, and then it's not perfect. And then you gotta sit there and try to sand the edge. And anybody that's uh, sanded edge grain of wood knows that takes a lot longer. And then a lot of times you're gonna get some unevenness so I just take that out of the equation. I make it a little bit longer, and then when I'm done gluing everything up and the glue is dry, it's very simple. All I have to do is go back, and for the most part, I'll do usually do about a half inch over to an inch, and I'll cut like, if I do a half inch, I'll cut a, uh, a very small amount off one end, and then I'll measure from that end down to the other end the distance that I need it to be, whether it's 72 inches in this case. I'll mark a line, and I'll take my track saw, and I'll just cut that nice and smooth. So then the table will be perfectly square and even. The next thing I like to do is obviously after my boards have all been dimensioned, right? And again, not everybody's gonna have planer, joiner, all that good stuff. So there's different techniques you can do it. You can each just go to a lumber store that sells stuff that's already pre-dimensioned and all you have to do is essentially cut one edge, maybe uh, touch one edge up if you do have a joiner. So I run it through the table saw get my desired thickness, and then I will bring them over to the table. Once I bring them over to the table, I've already got these boards specifically in the orientation that I want. But it's important that you do this because you want to make sure that all of your joints fit together perfectly. So yes, even if you joint one edge and run it through the table saw, there's going to be times where it moves just a little bit, or when you cut it, it you're actually relieving some strain on the wood or some tension, and sometimes, even after you dimension everything, what do you think happens? Well, the board will move just a little bit. So it's really simple. You just bring it over to the table, figure out what orientation works, and nine times out of 10, you're gonna find something where the orientation is going to work for the pieces that you have cut. Now, if you're trying to do something like I did here, where I actually have three different thickness, or excuse me, three different widths of the boards, and I did that on purpose to equal the distance that I wanted to, so when I glue them up, they're in a certain pattern, and I'll discuss that more in the next shot. Looking at my tabletop across the width, the width on this tabletop is gonna be 41 inches. So because I was able to get some different widths uh, for the boards, I was able to kind of make a pattern for this tabletop. Now, you're not gonna be able to see the, the lines where they glue up, other than the fact that the grain is slightly different from one board to another. But obviously the goal when you're gluing up a tabletop is you want to make sure that your seams essentially like here will pretty much be invisible so the only reason you're going to know it's another board is just because the grain is different now if the if the client say wants it to have that planked look it's a very simple fix all you have to do is once you get all your boards together and everything lines up good you can take a router bit um, a roundover bit on your router and you can do an ever so slight round over edge on each one of these uh, joints here. And what it'll do is it won't change the way that your boards glue together, but it will give it that look that it is planked boards. Uh, and some people like that. 
Now, if you look at my five boards that I have across to make up those 41 inches, the way I have it done is the middle board is a 10 inch uh, board, 10 inches in width. The two on the outside of that are then six and a half inch, and the two on the far outside are nine, totaling 41 inches. I do this because it does, it breaks up the monotony of every single piece being exactly the same width and it just gives it kind of a different look. Now I already have my uh, markings where I'm going to put my dominoes, but the process that I take is fairly simple. I just take my T-square here and I'll put it up against the edge and I'll run it in the same location however many uh, dominoes I want to use. In this case, this is 72 inches long. I'm only going to use five, but it'll be five on each board. And so I just basically stick this here. I mark the spot that I want. I go to the next seam. I mark the spot that I want. I go all the way down and then I flip over to the other side. If you had a, a longer T-square, then you could do all the way across in one, one go, but it doesn't really matter. I just do two on one side. I flip it around and I go to the other side and I do that. Another task that I always like to do is whatever end I want to then line up again, because what's going to happen is I'm going to move all these boards. I'm going to put them up against my wall. So I want to make sure that I always mark whatever number order that these boards are going to go together. So in this case, this is going to be one, two, three, four, five. And I know that the board closest to me standing on the side of the table is going to be one and they just move across that way. So now I've got everything ready to go. So what I'm going to start doing is go ahead and cutting my slots uh, for my dominoes. So I like to keep the boards up on the table to start this process. And this, I'll essentially just pull them as I need them, turn them, uh, drill the domino, and then I'm going to set each board behind me in that order. And then I want the tabletop cleared off because the next step that I'm going to take after I cut all the dominoes is to go ahead and lay my clamps out for the glue up. So let's get started go ahead and making the cuts. For these first cuts, I'm just going to do the normal size slot. Then the very next set of cuts I do into the adjoining board will be the wider slots, then regular, wider, regular, wider, and so on. So when it comes to clamping any sort of tabletop or cutting boards or anything that I need to apply a great amount of pressure and keep things flat at the same time, these Bessie uh, Revo parallel clamps have by far been the best thing that I've found so far. So um, with these, I have them offset. They, they apply pressure in about 15 degrees outward. So for this application, 72 inches long, I could probably use maybe one or two more of these, but I don't know how necessary it is. Um, I only have five, so that's what we're going to use in this process. Um, anytime I have something longer, then I'll, I'll break, maybe break out a pipe clamp, but I will always use these as the primary clamping force. And if I need something somewhere, then that's when I'll go ahead and add. Say I have a small gap in a small area in between the clamps, like in the center of the table, I might put a pipe clamp or something. But if the glue up comes out really good, um, I think the spacing on these will apply that pressure evenly so they'll overlap. All right, so essentially I have my boards oriented on the clamps the way that I like to have them because it just, I have a flow. So the one I have sitting closest to the camera is laying down. That's going to accept all the boards from the process that I'm about to take. So what I like to do is I like to put glue on everything up here first. So I'll run glue down every single one of these boards on the tops. Now every single one of these that I'm doing has the uh, standard size domino slot. Everything that it's going into has the larger size uh, slot. So when, once I get everything together, I can go ahead and adjust as needed. So what I like to do, put all the glue on. I'm going to count out how many dominoes I need for this. And all the boards that are up tells me exactly how many dominoes that I need. So in this case, 5, 10, 15, 20. That's how many dominoes I'm going to be using. 
So I'll apply all the glue, put all the dominoes in, and then because that one's laying flat, right as I'm ready to start sliding these together, then I will make sure that I lift that up and I put glue into that uh, slot there. And then I'll do so on and so forth for each set as I make them a set. But you'll see that as I go through the process. So once I've applied a liberal amount of glue, I've inserted all my dominoes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this disposable brush, I'll run it down, spread the glue out, uh, glue out. If I feel like I need any more glue anywhere else, then I'll add a little bit. And then what I'll do with the stuff that's actually on the paintbrush, as I go down, I'll just dab that domino with some glue. That way it just has some additional glue once it goes into the slot. A couple things that I forgot to mention that I'll go ahead and talk about now is uh, I always like to glue my tabletops, my panels facing upward. And the reason that is, so I want to be looking at whatever the top of the table is going to be, is because one, I don't care so much about the glue drip uh, run out on the bottom. Um, I'll spend, you know, I can go ahead and knock that down with a card scraper uh, after I've done everything. Um, but I do care about the top because I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to fix glue mistakes uh, on the top of the board when it's time to come and start doing my finish sanding and then have run the risk of you know potentially staying too long on one spot to try to get rid of the glue especially if you're staining it uh, because uh, the stain will not adhere to glue obviously so then you're gonna have those ugly spots so that might be a, a helpful tip to some of you guys and then the other portion is the glue itself. So I'm kind of just spreading it quick. Once I clamp it together, obviously it's gonna, it's gonna compress and it's gonna move out. Um, so I'm not really concerned if I have glue that runs down one, one portion of the, uh, of the tabletop on one side, because again, the top I'm gonna clean up uh, before uh, I actually leave it uh, clamped. So I'll just do a quick once over, I'm looking, I see a couple spots, probably use a little bit more glue. By the time you get to the end, um, the, the brush is gonna be so soaked with glue that if you did have some spots that looked like they were a little light, but it's these early spots. Notice how I started here on this board because that, that brush is kind of soaking up that glue. Um, so it, it doesn't uh, spread as well, but once you get through it, and you go through the whole board that you know there's plenty of glue on that brush so you can kind of just go back over those places but for the most part I think it is pretty good so I'll just do one more little touch up spot right here and I'll start sliding them in now when I'm putting these together I don't care if there's a small gap. It's going to be so quick, uh, me sliding these boards in, that it's not really that big of a concern. I just want to get them actually in so I can begin clamping. I find it's easiest to start at one end. And for the most part, nine times out of ten, they'll line up pretty good. But what will end up happening is you'll get a couple of bows in the wood, especially if you cut them, and then you like let them sit overnight because, um, again, you've, you've released some sort of tension in the wood, so even though they're dimensioned. But as long as you just start going down the row, starting at one end or the other, you can get them to line up just right. And on these ones, Looks like I need to add a little bit of glue to these dominoes. Start at one end, slide it in, slide it in.
Like that's an example right there of one of the boards that slightly uh, bowed sitting here overnight, but it's not a problem now that we got the dominoes in there. Now we still have a gap because that one's a tight fit. Again, not an issue, not a concern because we're going to lay our last board down. Take a look, make sure that the boards are relatively flush, and it looks like they're very close. But again, remember I cut slots that would allow for me to slide them in the event that something like this happens. Do you have to do it with the domino? Absolutely not. You do not have to do that. However, if you slightly mess up, you're going to be thankful or you don't get it right on the line that you made, you're going to be thankful that you did uh, do the slots. So it's time to actually start tightening up these clamps. So what I like to do is I start at one end, go to the other end, go to the center, then to the two inners, and then I'll go down the line to make sure they're all good. I'm not clamping so much to where it's really hard to turn. I'm clamping until I start to see the glue start to bead out and come out of the joint itself. So as I'm clamping this, so this is the first one, I'm just getting it to where they're touching. All right, I'm gonna look underneath, make sure that I'm flat on those bars, which I am, perfectly flat. All right, so this one's tight. I just barely started to see glue. I'm gonna come down to this end. Tighten this now, start cranking my handle bringing the boards closer together because remember I had all that slack left over bringing them closer together before I get them completely tight I'm gonna look underneath make sure that I'm flat now I'm flat and now I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this one down now I've got glue starting to come out of the seams. Everything's nice and tight. So that one is good to go. Now I'm gonna to come to the middle. Nine times out of 10, the middle is gonna be flat because the ends are flat. In this case, it is. I get my clamps nice and tight. Start cranking on this one. And now I see glue coming out of the joints. All the lines line up. Now I'm gonna to go to my inner clamps, clamp those down. I got glue coming out. Glue. And I'm gonna to go to my final clamp. Tighten that down. I see glue on my joints. Now I'll go back to my first one. Get that nice and tight. Tighten that, tighten that, tighten that, and that one. And that's it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button. Feel free to leave me any comments or send me a message. If you're not already following me on Instagram, uh, make sure that you click the link down below. You can follow me on Instagram and that way you'll get to see what I'm doing on a daily basis. I like to try to post a couple of times a day. So if you wanna kinda of see what I'm doing along the way, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and share my channel. And as always, I'll see you next time.